Hello, everybody. Andrew Blake from the DigitalAudioManual.com. Today, let's talk about the new Visibility tab in Cubase 13. When you open up the key editor or the drum editor, we now have an option over on the left that says Visibility. And with this tab, we're actually able to now choose our tracks and do a couple of extra options in terms of how they view in the editor that we didn't have in the previous versions of Cubase. Now to get here, let's back out for a minute. I'm looking at my project. I have some MIDI tracks. If I go to any particular MIDI track, double click on it, then it opens up in what's called the key editor. And a couple of things you want to do to make sure you can see this visibility tab, go up to your toolbar, right click, and at the bottom, make sure you have the option that says window zone controls checked. That gives you this area right here. And when you activate this button on the left, that will open up this visibility option. The other thing to check, because there's a couple of things over here on the left, hit this little gear area and make sure that the option at visibility is also checked. Once you have that and you have this opened, if you have more than one track or other tracks in your project, you'll be able to click through those, check them for their visibility or uncheck them, and then you can begin different editing tasks. So one of our first options is how things relate in the project. As you can see in the project, I have four MIDI tracks with different events on them. If I go back into the key editor on my inspector, I also have the option for four different tracks with events on them. The very left upper column is a little stick pin. If I check that or highlight it, when I go back to the project, if I take a track and hide it, and now I only have three tracks in my project, if I go back into my editor, even though I've hidden a track in the project, I still have four tracks and everything is still visible here. On the other hand, if I uncheck this little stick pin and then go back to my project, take a track, take two tracks this time and hide them. Now when I come back into the key editor, those two tracks have been removed. So that stick pin allows you to have different views in the project and the key editor. Another new option is we now see these events above the editor. And the next button we have over here, if we click on this, allows us to show this or not. If I uncheck it, it goes away. If I check it, it comes back. And then you have the option to see all the visible tracks, which basically means all the tracks all the time. Or you can take the option to see only the active tracks. I have to highlight it here, make it show up. If you do show the parts, additionally, you have this little check mark so you can check or uncheck which ones you see show up in the list. Back in the project view, you have a drop down for configurations, which are views you set up yourself in the project, where you can add a configuration, update a configuration. You're in the key editor, you have this little eye, and it allows you to get to those configurations as well. You have access to all the visibility agents, just like in the project view, and these are always some great options. You can show all the tracks, hide selected tracks, hide disabled tracks, and then if you have a long list of tracks, you can use this button to search through them. Other options over here that allow you to do some quick view changes, depending on what you have shown or hidden, you can click the option up here that says All Tracks, and that brings everything into view. And like we said, if you click on a particular track, it selects it, but if you double click on it, then it just puts that event in the view alone. For example, if I come down to this kick, double click it, I'm immediately looking at my kick drum. If you have multiple parts and events, you go to one of your events and select only that event. When you open the editor, although you may see it in the overview, you may not see any MIDI data like we're seeing here. Notice over on this one, there's no MIDI data. You look at your visibility tab, instead of the checkbox, now it shows a rectangle. That's letting you know that there's more data that you don't have shown here. Once you hit that rectangle, then all the MIDI data shows up. Anytime you click on an event, you can move or edit that event. And if I click on a different event or note, then I can move that. And whatever I click on, it'll change up here, show that that's the active part or track. The exceptions and the differences are, you're trying to do more than one event or part at the same time. If you come up to your toolbar, you have a drop down that says the part editing mode. And you have three selections of all parts, the active part, or all parts on the active track. If I go to this active part, the second option here, that's telling me is again, I can move any note that I select, but if I try to drag over two notes, two different parts, it only allows me to select one or the other. But I can't select both of them because I've told it I can only do one part at a time. If I drag over these, only one of them becomes highlighted. If I go back up to this part drop down and I make the option that says all the parts, now it doesn't matter. I can select any number, any combination, and then I can edit those together. So if you want to be able to work on one part, even though you can see multiple parts in the window, then you want to choose the one that says the active part. If you want to be able to click and change anything that you see in the window, you want to be in the option for all the parts. Hey, my friend, it's Andrew here, and I want to ask you, are you looking to increase your level of understanding and expertise with programs like Cubase, WaveLab, and other music software? As you're listening to others teach you, you think the information is good, 
but you feel like you're not understanding things exactly the way you would like to? Presenting the all-new Digital Audio Manual Preferred. This is a series of videos that will help move you along the path from wherever you are now to a higher level of knowledge and understanding. The whole concept is based on taking the vast majority of information that's available in the manuals of some of your favorite programs like Cubase or WaveLab or many others that are in the works and then presents them to you in a fresh new way. All these videos are laid out like the manual, the subjects are titled like the manual, the information is searchable like the manual, all with one gigantic difference. Everything is demonstrated in real-time situations. It gives you examples and processes to learn and use all the information. And you're going to see, just like so many have done already, it's literally a treasure chest of hidden and rarely explained features and functions, all leading you step by step from the beginning to end, empowering you with a new language set and the programs you may have already been using for years, or even if you're just getting started. So if this sounds interesting to you, come and be part of a clear path to a better way to learn. Click on the link below to get access, and I will see you on the inside. All right, let's get back to our discussion. So we've been mainly focusing with the key editor and synthesizer parts. Let's switch over to drum parts exclusively for a minute. And if you get a handle of what I'm about to show you now, you are going to gain some super powerful editing capabilities. Right now I have this drum part, which consists of seven, eight different tracks. Something with Groove Agent, all the parts are dissolved. If I go to my very first track, and then I come over to the inspector, I go to the drum map area, right now it says no drum map, and I click on it, and I say create a drum map from the instrument, and then I double click on this part, then that part opens up in the drum editor, which is the key editor designed for drums. And then I can play my parts just like I did. But now I can see them and edit them, with all the great features that go with the drum editor, including the little drumstick, which allows me to quickly write in drum parts. If I use the inspector now, going over into this inspector view, I can check the other drum parts that I want to see. And I can just quickly check those parts, and then I have them in the editor, completely visible to edit. I can click on any name in this list. I can scroll up and down with my arrow. And that selects it just like it would in the project view. I can check that part to bring it into view. Or... I can move these arrows and at the same time hold shift, which allows me to select multiple parts at the same time. Then I can hit those with a check mark and all those parts will become visible or I can check them again and remove all those parts. You know how to move around in the editor like this, change your visibility. The way you can take control of your drum parts will definitely go to a higher level. As we mentioned before, remember that you can just pick one of these tracks and double click on it to bring that into view. So where sometimes you may want to select multiple tracks and hit the checkbox, other times you may just want to hit the title, double click it, and immediately that becomes the exclusive track that you see here. If your track has lanes up in the editor view here, you can hit the down arrow and choose any of these different lanes and then bring those into view on the event. You can also copy events from one track to another. I want to come up to my visibility tab and take this last option that says all the parts on the active track. At this point, it shows the kick track right here, so I know what I'm copying from. Back in my project window, I have a kick track, and then I have another kick track, but it's just empty. I go to the kick track that has some data on it, double-click it. Now I'm looking at this kick data up in the editor. If I go over and check my empty track, that also becomes visible. There's no data on it, but up here, this event display, you can choose it or the event that has the data. I'm going to start by taking the event that has the data, use my range tool, Select a few of these kicks, right click, remove the range tool, but leave the events selected. Hit control C to copy. Now if I go up to this event display at the top and I click on the other event, the empty one, say I want to go over here and paste these in. If I hit control V, now I have those kicks on the new track and it shows the event down here. All right, it's gonna wrap it up for today. As always, if you haven't already, click the link below this video to learn how you can get access to the all new digital audio manual preferred. It's the clear step-by-step -step solution showing you not only the tips, but all the secret and typically never talked about features that'll take you to a higher level of using your software. If you've been searching for an all-in-one solution to take you from start to finish and learning Cubase and WaveLab and other music software, this is exactly what you've been looking for. So click on the link below and come and be part of the clear path to a better learning experience. So today we talked about the visibility tab in Cubase 13. We learned first how to find the visibility tab how to turn the contents on or off, how to show and hide the different parts. We learned that we could double click if we want to solo a view, what the little hidden MIDI data rectangle stands for. We learned the difference between all parts and active parts. We learned how we can select tracks. And then we ended up learning how we can paste events 
from one track to another. And we'll continue to explore all these different features and functions in Cubase. As always, great to have you guys here, and I'll see you on the next video.